Since I was young, I had an intense desire to discover the world around me. That hasn't changed, just the level of adventure. Now, every journey has a purpose. And each time I venture out to explore new destinations around the globe, I am following my travel quest. They're looking for gigantic right now. <laughs> the Korean traditional 19th century dress is called a hanbok. Did you put down your cleaning deposit? <laughs> <laughs> My particular one is that of a nobleman. I feel royal already. Oh. Uh, you better put your slipper on there. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that. Our guide Angela convinced me that wearing it all morning while I visit the palace grounds would be perfectly normal. Lots of people do it. They told me everybody in Korea dressed like this. It didn't take long for people of many nationalities, from Koreans to Chinese to Malaysians to Taiwanese, to ask to have their picture taken with me. I'll tell you, they watch my program everywhere in the world. Apparently, even at the police station. Over the years, I've heard incredible tales of a Pacific Island wilderness where time has literally frozen. A country of immense cultural and biological diversity. With over 800 languages spoken and where dancing and music is performed as a way of passing their history and legends to the next generation. Join me as we explore this remote, mysterious destination known as Papua New Guinea. The swells were topping 20 feet, violent enough to send a good number of passengers to their cabins, but nowhere near the 40-foot waves I had heard about. This was considered an average crossing, and I never thought I'd say I liked average, but I liked average. Our first landing brought us up close and personal with a colony of Gen 2 penguins. Reaching up to 36 inches tall, they are formidable eating machines, consuming up to two pounds of krill and fish each day while chick rearing. The young are born at the beginning of summer to make the most out of the warmth. The summer of Antarctica is the opposite of the northern hemisphere, so December, January, and February mark the chick rearing season. The first thing you notice as you near a penguin colony is the odor. Trust me when I say that you can be thankful that smell-o-vision has yet to be invented. The second thing you'll notice is the huge number of birds, and penguins, of course, are birds. With one exception, penguins are not social animals, but they're colonial animals, which means that they come together for all the important events of their lives, molting, breeding, hatching their young. And they do that to protect themselves from predators. Emus National Park in Brazil gave us some incredible sightings, including rare canines, the cutest owls on earth, and of course, the giant anaconda, whose head I just had to see but the visit was bittersweet without seeing a jaguar. Doug assured me though, that the best opportunity would be in the Southern Pantanal where he conducts his research. So I jumped at the chance when he invited me to join him on one of his projects. At 75,000 square miles, the Pantanal is the largest wetland in the world. To get to his research area, we had to fly to Kiwiapa, drive three hours into the Pantanal, and then take a boat another two hours into the wilderness. Given its isolation, I was curious what it was about this area that drew Doug in. Uh, we see here, and what my research is also showing, is that you'll have multiple jaguars using the same territory because there's just so much food. Wetlands produce more biomass than any other type of, of biome, any other type of life zone. So they find much more food here. They don't, they're not as dependent on having each having their own individual territory. So you end up with greater numbers of jaguars here than you do anywhere else. 